Good morning. You're watching Morning at NTV. And every single Friday I try because that challenge that I took up has become something, sort of a passion for me now, where I highlight Ugandan writers. Now you thought to me, every single Friday? There's no way we have that plenty of writers. So it turns out we do, and very accomplished ones. Uh, my guest today is a senior reporter at the Global Press Institute, a board member of FemRight. We discussed FemRight last week. It's a Ugandan Women Writers Association. She's also a recipient of the Young Achievers Award, that's in 2011, and she was shortlisted in 2015 for the Molan Writing Scholarship and 2011 Kane Prize for African writing and trust me that's just like two percent of her achievements um she did um actually she's vice president of pen i need you to remember that because there's a discussion around that she's also working on her novel nyapa rosa but anena's victory is her supplement uh, her book which has become supplementary reading in um primary schools but i also have butterfly dreams this is a collection of her short stories and I'll be reading something that I like in the book and why I like that. But please, a uh, big good morning to Beatrice Lamwaha. Good morning, Flavia. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> See, it's written as Lamwaka to the rest of us who wouldn't know how it's pronounced, but I'm glad you corrected that. Beatrice, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for making time and coming here. I want to really get to know about you and your work. And not just me, I want, of course, <laughs> the viewers to get to know you. So I, I always say that to start to get to know a writer is to get to know the person themselves, not who's on the pages. So who's Beatrice? Ha, Beatrice. I, I was born in Gulu, mm. and uh, that's where I, I studied primary, but then completed my primary uh, in Kangole Girls, Karamoja, oh. because of, you know, the war that was taking yeah. place. Um, and then I joined uh, St. Joseph's girls school in Zambia and then went mm. to Namugongo, uh, Uganda Masters mm. and then uh, Makere University. Went through very disciplined schools. <laughs> I'm very disciplined <laughs> I think. <laughs> so eventually you go to Makere, what do you study then? At I studied uh, a Bachelor of Arts with ed education so mm. I studied uh, literature and English language. Okay to be a teacher to be a teacher. Did you take that apart or did you? I did a bit of teaching, the, you know, <laughs> the teach, what's that thing? I did teaching practice mm -hmm. and then soon after I decided um, to focus on writing because I, I thought I needed to train myself how to write. Okay. I mean, I can understand that maybe literature might have biased you towards writing. But is that where it all started? Is, where, is that where your interest picked from writing? Uh, we had books at home mm. and my father loved to read. And so I started picking up on books that even may not were age appropriate and mm -hmm. reading them. And, and then I just love literature. So I love <laughs> to read even up to now. I, my handbag has a book a to book. read. <laughs> Always I have a book to read. What kind of books did, uh, did daddy have at home? What were ah. the stories? <laughs> History? Huh? History, actually. But one of the stories I do remember, I think it was from school, was um, it was written by an Italian priest. <laughs> what pal joke in a trolley. And I, ah, yeah. Yeah, and so it was there. I remember that story very well. Mm -hmm. I even later got a copy just to read and see what I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turns out I still like. <laughs> you said Italian, and I remembered uh, that your, your stories have actually been translated into Spanish and Italian. I think we'll talk about how it ended up happening. But so you, you, your father has books and you read. But I've always, thought, I, I mean, I have an interest in reading. I know a lot of people who like to read, but never get to the writing part. I'm saying this because we're not raised to write in this, you know, when we're growing up, yes, you can read a book or two, but never the interest to actually write. So what, what happens to you? What is in your mind? Why do you like putting your thoughts down? <laughs> oh, yeah, how I started, I know like most of the books we read, you know, you sometimes they're written by white people or they're dead white people. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. you, know, you hardly get the motivation to write mm. or even think that you can write. Yeah. It's only when I heard about uh, Fem Right, Uganda Women Writers Association, so I said, oh, let me let me also go find out what they're doing mm -hmm. and how they're doing it. And also way before that, in A-Level, 
uh, my teacher used to bring in, uh, we used to study, you know, poetry. Mm. And some of the po poems were, you know, written by Ugandans. And he had friends, I think, who are poets. Yeah. And so once in a while, he would bring one and he talks to Work us done and by things Ugandans. like that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I started learning that, oh, as a Ugandan, I'm able to write. Mm. And, and then I started scribbling things. Of course, I wasn't sure what I was doing was right. But when I joined Femrite, and there were, there were, you know, like there were, it was started by Mary Karoro Kurut, so mm. you, and she has written, and you've read her work, and mm. there's Goreti Chomohendo, and uh, all these people, and so you, you, you look at them and you say, hmm, they look normal, they don't have horns on their heads <laughs> or anything, so... Possibly they they, they like me. Yes, yeah, so possibly can I can also <laughs> write. And so that's how I started scribbling mm. and then sharing my work and also attending workshops and reading more because also as a writer, you have got to read and that's the best way to learn. Okay, you, you said firm write and actually your story um, into starting to write sort of sounds like Glider who we had last week. But for her, she said she had already written her stories but when she got to Femrite and they read the stories, they had to really pan a bit into who she is today. Is that what happened to you or when you walked in? Because you said um, right after to university is when you went into Femrite. Mm. Did you go with your own stories or did you walk in, learn, and then start to write? I remember when I, uh, the, when I just joined, there was a call for short stories and there's uh, an anthology called well, Words for Granary. Mm. So I did write my story and... It was accepted, of course, oh, okay. with revision. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, <laughs> my back. And I said, did something. <laughs> <laughs> I did something. I think I know. And that what was I'm your doing. first that you had written. Yes. yes. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. So you write short stories. Now I think most times when we hear writers, people are expecting, a, you know, novel or a mm -hmm. big book. Um, but short stories, because I did literature. Short stories are actually tough. To, to write, you understand? Just to pack your thoughts and depth into this short story is deep. Why the interest in short stories, though, for you? Um, first, I tried, I thought poetry was easy to write. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just a short, you know? Yeah, short. Mm. Sit one five minutes yes. and you're done. I did that, and it just never really... I, some people say they're not that bad. But <laughs> <laughs> but you're critiquing yourself so, so hard. Yeah, so okay. I'm not sure. I do write some poetry still, mm. but I'm not very sure about my poetry. Okay. And then I, I just found that my short. I there's something about short stories. Yes, you know, um, it's actually harder to write because you have to it keep is. everything mm. short. Uh, but I feel like. Sometimes I do write my stories in my mind, and so <laughs> it, it actually works in my mind. And when mm. I do sit down and I write, and then, because also we, we, we did, not many publishers were even interested in short stories. So what I did is, you know, like always try and find, write a short story, send it out and see. And if someone yeah. says, yes, why not, mm -hmm. then... I'm like, okay, I've done a good job. Yeah. So the Next. first first recognition for Femrite, was that um, any of the stories in here? Yes, it's in the, it's called... It's not... Vengeance of the Gods. Oh, no, okay. that one came much later. So Butterfly Dreams came much later. So I, I was just looking at this, and you shared a story that I'm hoping you can be open about to share with the rest. But uh, this is Butterfly Dreams. So this is a collection of short stories. Butterfly Dream says, uh, you said, Afoyo, you said thank you to Ma. That's the first word we heard you say. We're happy to hear you say something. We hope that you'll be able to say a lot more. Tell us more than Anena, Aya, and I'm hoping I'm saying this right, Bongomin, Nyeko, Ayat, and it goes on. And for me, when I, when I was, because I was just flipping through with her before she came on, and I was like, this is so really, this is so relatable. It has things like headmaster, like Cho Primary School. You'd think you're reading a, a true story, uh, something so real, and not just a story told by someone. But then you did share that this is sort of real. It's a story mm. very personal to you. Tell me about Butterfly Dreams. This is a very personal story in a way because I, I, I set it on my brother. My brother 
uh, got abducted uh, many years ago. And of course, you know, the waiting and the hoping and hoping that, you know, and people coming home to tell you stories, oh, he died or whatever happened to him. But he did come home. And then so when he, you know, when you've been told that your son has, you know, has been killed or your brother is dead, and then suddenly he comes home, then how do you respond to that? That's what I was really dealing with. Of course, some, they've totally changed. Uh, mm. They don't respond to things that they responded to while, mm. you know, while they were home. And so it's that change in that person that I was dealing with. And um, although I did not spend much time with my brother when he returned, I, of course, imagined the rest because I've had stories before of people who were abducted and then they came back home mm. and how, you know, we know that mental health is a big yeah it's a really big deal issue that um that has affected us and mm. maybe needs to be dealt with your brother passed on passed on yeah completely got sick and soon after and he died mm. so th th who then shares this story with you the rest of the beats th that you were told Oh, uh, the who uh, I just mentioned names of people who I imagined were mm. abducted and probably mm -hmm. because uh, in that story the person comes back but is not really talking and so most of the things I imagine mm. and uh, uh, the narrator connects it with uh, the stories that they have had before from different people who were mm -hmm. abducted and then they came back home, yeah, and their experiences really. Has your family talked about this openly for you to get bits and pieces for this story? Uh, one of the things I think most families deal with is issue of silence. Oof. Yes. Uh, we don't talk much about some of the issues <laughs> mm. because, of course, they're painful and mm. people are more like, ah, I need to survive this yes. and I need to move on with my life. And so... Not really. We haven't really dealt with that that much. Because also my mother passed on two, um, so years after. So, and of course that deeply affected her. And so, yeah, we haven't really, dis there's so many things we should have discussed, but we haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so anyone else in the family who's read the story, have they told you? What My family do read uh, sometimes, sometimes not. And when they read, they're just picking out who <laughs> I'm writing about. <laughs> you, this you one, this <laughs> one. <laughs> you put an <laughs> in the story. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Did but, uh, yes, I, I do, I do write. And <laughs> sometimes when I feel like it's so close to home, yeah. I try to even hide some of the stories so that nobody reads They them. don't <laughs> see it, yeah. And, and, and um, has it helped you heal writing? I think so much, mm. so much. Because I think there are times when I would, uh, like, because I live mainly in Kampala, so when then I go home and I'd be so depressed and then so... Pen and paper was my friend, mm. and I could write the stories and deal with some of the things, and it made me feel better. Mm. And I also felt, you know, helpless. I'm like, oh, people are going through all these things, and there's mm. nothing I can do about it. But writing also was like, okay, yeah, in a way I've dealt with it, I've mm -hmm. mentioned it, and talked about it. Maybe I didn't even have the power to do anything. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of and it's through this series, by the way, that I've got to know that there's a lot of stories that have been told of what happened in northern Uganda. And I'm talking about people's experiences at home, you know, mother, father, child, you know. And, and, and I've always wondered if they help, uh, you know, the communities heal and the person heal. So I'm glad to, say, uh, to hear that you said it, you, it helped you heal. But you were... You were telling me, interestingly, that when this was actually sent into, is it the Kane Prize? Kane Prize. <laughs> <laughs> they were saying, too sad. What is too, too sad. sad. <laughs> and some people didn't even, like, because there's so many sad stories, but mm. they maybe you read and you just get disgusted and you leave it there. Yeah. But then probably there is something that I did write. I'm able to convey the stories and you get the feelings uh -huh. or the emotions that I'm talking about. And so, uh, yeah. 
But you, people, you, you didn't win. I didn't win, but I came close. <laughs> and the good thing about being uh, shortlisted for the Kane Prize yeah. is at least you get a trip to the UK <laughs> and have all these, you know, fancy dinners. Uh -huh. And uh, their winner is announced at, um, at Oxford University in a very, mm. you know... Rubbing yes. shoulders yes, with, with the All people. these, yeah, diplomats. Uh, actually, the ambassador... Um, the Ugandan ambassador in the UK mm. was invited uh, to, to, you know, to witness a yes. Ugandan was shortlisted. So, so imagine your writing <laughs> is taking you places. Yes, writing does take people places. Let me, so, so this is Butterfly Dreams, just to, for people to understand your work. So the, what's a Nena's, um, is it a Nena's story? A Nena's victory. Yeah. That was for prime, it has been supplemented in primary schools. You said at the time they were looking for people to write about HIV and AIDS. And yeah, yeah, we, um, a number of people did write about uh, uh, HIV AIDS mm. for young children to understand how it's affecting yes. them in the community. So me, I wrote about uh, this lady who is sick, has HIV AIDS, mm. and is sick and uh, people, you know, can accept that she has AIDS. Yes. And so they take her to a witch doctor oh. to treat her. Of this demon. Yes. And of course she doesn't get well. Mm. I, I think we've, we've, thankfully we've come a long way in knowing what <laughs> HIV yes. and AIDS is. But uh, so, so if someone is going to get your work, what they'll get ideally is Butterfly Dr uh, Dreams, which is the collection. Yes, and it has so many different short stories, mm -hmm. and I, I've even included some poetry, but uh, I don't mention The <laughs> one you fear for us to read. I think go and read the poetry. She's a critic of herself a bit too much. Maybe it's not that bad, as she says. So what about, uh, is it Nya? Nya? Nya Parosa. Nya Parosa. Nya Parosa. Yeah, it's a novel that I'm working on. I've been working on... Uh, writing my novel for such a long time. Don't say it, because we keep saying writers take their time <laughs> with the work. <laughs> I don't know, especially the novel. I mm. liked writing my short stories. Sometimes I wonder if maybe I'm just meant to write short stories. <laughs> because, I, you know, I can sit down. Some stories in one sitting and you're done. Mm -hmm. But some, of course, take a long time. Mm. And some, yeah. So it all depends. But with the novel. We're not close to reading it, are we? Yeah, because I also keep uh, <laughs> writing drafts and putting them away and yeah. starting a new one and then okay so um i want to talk about self-publishing uh butterfly dreams you say uh lakalatwe books is yours you self-published i find that brave i think what made me brave also is because i i knew that uh some of the short stories have already been published and maybe reprinted even so mm -hmm. i was like and they are not available in uganda and i was tired of always telling people I'm a writer and then when I my work is out there yeah, my work <laughs> is out here. there <laughs> and if I bring like the collection then the books like they hit mm. like here and the, the books I'm not willing to sell I mean to lend and mm. when I lend the people sometimes don't return yeah. and then buying another coffee is so expensive so I said okay let me do this let me do this so I did I is it working together. for you? It's working for me uh, because mm -hmm. I, I have I managed to sell them. Mm. Yeah, but that's because I proactively put in yeah. my hand there. Because self-publishing, you must be your own marketing yeah. tool, PR tool, everything. Put in my hand <laughs> I'd like to interest you in my book. Yes. Would you like to buy a copy? <laughs> so and I will autograph. Is, is it out now? Can they get this now? Yes, uh, they're in a number of places. Okay. Uh, at the museum, there's mm. a whatever they sell books yeah, there. Good. There's a copy, and we turn a page. You just order, and he can bring the book wherever oh, you nice, are. Nice, nice, so. nice. Yeah. So look for Butterfly Dreams by Beatrice Lamwaha. It, it's Lamwaka. I don't want you to say looking for the H. <laughs> but so and then support because then you know the point is to actually support our Ugandan writers. So self-publishing versus people who are published by others. And I'm told because you must change the context of your book or people will dictate what you write about. And so some writers are in Uganda are saying that we're not comfortable with that. But because sometimes the point is to get your name out there, then you mm. can always figure out a point. Do you think a lot of them do that? Yes, a lot of them do that. And I think it's a good thing because mm -hmm. we don't have many publishers. And if there are many publishers, they are, not, they are interested in textbooks mm. and other things. And so 
fiction, of course, they'll tell you, oh, especially those who are writing poetry, they'll tell mm. you, ah, this one doesn't sell. Mm. And so you basically, and you, we have good work out there. So why not publish mm. and make it available? If you find a publisher later, mm. good and well. Okay. But for now, don't sit on your work and say, ah, there are no publishers. Just put it out there. Why, why is this sort of work not selling? Are we as Ugandans not buying enough? Are we not understanding it enough? Or is it, is it that you don't have where to actually place this to be bought? But you just said it's available everywhere, which means there's access to it. Yeah, there's access to it. I think um, moments where I have actually sold my book to people, after, you know, I sold to family and friends. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's <laughs> a good place to start. <laughs> Beatrice, you're smart. <laughs> start with the ones around you. <laughs> yes, it's not around <laughs> yes. you. And then, you know, you go out there and yes. people actually buy books. Mm. They, yeah, especially when you're selling yourself and mm. they will buy and read as well. People good. do, and Ugandans do read. Yes, there's a percentage that, that does doesn't, not read, yeah. but people do read. I hear you. Uh, so talk to us about pen. I, I, I said in the beginning you will explain to us because you're doing some big things with pen. Uh, pen is a, a, a writer's association. Mm. P stands for poets, E, essays, editors, and N, novelists. Oh. So like all writers. A collection. Are, yeah, mm. a collection of all writers. It was started many years ago. Uh, in the UK and mm. so there are all many centers around the world mm -hmm. and some countries even depending on need they have like many centers mm -hmm. um, so for us in Uganda we have one center and we promote of course reading and writing mm. and we have uh, we have a project in uh, in Luzira prisons where uh, we wow. train inmates to write short stories poetry mm -hmm. and plays and uh, we came up with so many good work that um, it's just overwhelming. But wow. we managed to publish, you know, a collection, an anthology of all these different um, uh, writers, uh, inmates, wow. uh, who some of them had never written anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, somehow they joined and we trained them and they were So you, you're going into the Luzira prison and it doesn't matter they don't have writing skills or background, you just train them. Yes, as long as you say, I want to write I want to and write. I will be here. And so far you're saying you've actually done a collection of this. And how is the writing? What are the stories that are they telling? Is it good stuff? Very good stuff, mm -hmm. very good stuff. One of the things that stood out for me was, uh, especially the women, mm. they're wondering what's going on with their children. Oh, at and home. that, yeah, that was painful. That's, yeah. And because we first published a, a, a newsletter and when we shared with them and we had a reading and things, and many cried so much when they were reading, reading stories or poetry about their mm. children and how in the condition in which they are. Uh, and some inmates, of course, are thinking about, you know, like the relationship, my mother, you know, how did yeah. she react when, you know, the judge said guilty and things wow. like that. So, yeah. No one ever thinks of that side. That's powerful. And is this available for the rest of us to read? Yes, it's that available. Like we, read. yeah, we will soon put them, you know, like in all bookstores oh, okay. and, uh, okay. and, and also have opportunities to talk about them or have readings, but we will be the ones to read the work, okay. of course, okay, uh, in, yeah. in different events. Fantastic. Well, that's fantastic. So before I wind up, I need to ask you, your stories have been translated in Spanish and Italian. Why this specifically? Actually, it's people who read and feel that, oh, I, I like this story and mm -hmm. I need to translate it. And so they contact me and say, would like to wow. translate this story and make it available in Spanish or Italian. And you say, yeah, 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 yeah please, <laughs> please, yes, yes. <laughs> I actually have like three, three short stories published in all different anthologies and different right. whatever in Spanish. And one was shared on um, Huffington Post. I don't know if yeah, many people, yeah. So it really got like good readership. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let, <laughs> let my characters speak <laughs> languages I will never speak. You know, I think it's, it, this has been interesting. And thank you because, you know, she's, she's just saying, yeah, and then my book and then my story. But you have done 
big things. You, your, your work has reached big strides, you know? And I think for me, the, that's the good part. The bad part is that Ugandans need to, we need to celebrate our own a lot more. You understand? Because here you are being celebrated elsewhere, and someone might be at home thinking, I've ne I had never heard of Beatrice. You know, so shame upon us. We need, to <laughs> we need to start supporting our own. Butterfly Dreams is the work uh, that you can actually get as a compilation of her short stories. And she says somewhere in there she's put in a few poems. She critiqued herself and said she's not really interested in poems because she doesn't feel she brings her best to it. But get a copy of Butterfly Dreams and support Beatrice Lamoha. Every Friday, I host a Ugandan writer, and this has been an interesting one. Beatrice, nice to meet you. Please keep yes. writing. And when Nyaparosa is done in, like, the next few months, Yes, I will need to do it <laughs> because, I, like last week, somebody told me the same. So really, I think the universe is telling me yes, something. Yes, yes. Right and right and right. Right and right and right and right, and we'll definitely keep supporting you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for hosting us. All right. So that's it uh, for morning at NTV. Have a good weekend.